Natural health sciences encompassing treatments like herbal medicine, acupuncture, probiotics, and mind-body therapies have gained increasing global attention. Yet alongside growing popularity, the field faces equally growing skepticism. In Chapter 5 of Natural Health Sciences, a comprehensive guide, Rasset Dink tackles these critiques head-on, presenting not only what the critics say, but also how the field responds with research, context, and evolving standards. A primary criticism is the lack of a scientific basis for many natural health practices. Detractors argue that much of the field relies on anecdotal evidence or tradition, not clinical trials. And this concern isn't unfounded. However, Dink notes that while certain practices are still awaiting modern scientific validation, many others have been evaluated through randomized controlled trials, observational studies, and systematic reviews. For example, therapies like acupuncture, sun John's wart and probiotics have demonstrated measurable outcomes in controlled settings. It's also important to consider that traditional medical systems are often based on centuries of structured experiential knowledge, which while different from Western science, offers its own internal consistency and clinical logic. Another concern revolves around safety and side effects. Critics warn that natural treatments can lead to adverse effects, especially when combined with pharmaceuticals. While it's true that some interactions can be dangerous, like Saint John's wart interfering with antidepressants or anticoagulants, many natural treatments are actually milder in their side effects than conventional pharmaceuticals. What's key here is individualized care and professional guidance. No treatment, natural or pharmaceutical, should be generalized across all cases. Personalized evaluation is essential. Perhaps one of the most serious criticisms is that natural therapies are sometimes used in place of allopathic medicine in serious or life-threatening conditions. And this is indeed a danger when natural approaches are adopted blindly. However, the more realistic picture presented in the book is that many practitioners and patients use natural treatments in conjunction with conventional care, not instead of it. This integrative model, also called complementary medicine, aims to bring together the best of both worlds, improving quality of life while still addressing core pathology with evidence-based treatments. Another major critique is the uncertainty around dosage and standardization. Natural health products often lack precise, scientifically validated dosing guidelines. Dink acknowledges this issue and notes that while some remedies, such as standardized herbal extracts, have well-documented dosage ranges, others require further investigation. Still, efforts are being made to establish better dosage guidelines through pharmacological research and regulatory oversight. Then there's the issue of unsubstantiated claims and misleading information, particularly in online spaces. Natural health is not immune to pseudoscience. However, Rasit Dink reminds us that misinformation is not exclusive to this field. It's a problem that affects all areas of medicine, including pharmaceuticals. What matters is whether claims are rooted in evidence, and this calls for greater media literacy and stricter regulatory controls across the entire healthcare spectrum. A less often discussed but important concern is training and certification. Critics argue that natural health practitioners vary widely in their educational background, which can lead to inconsistency in care. This point is valid, and Dink advocates for the professionalization of the field. Many countries are now establishing national boards, certification programs, and standardized training curricula to ensure quality of care. Financial accessibility also enters the discussion. Natural health products and services are often not covered by insurance and can be expensive. But as Dink points out, the same criticism applies to allopathic medicine, where costs can be equally or more prohibitive. Moreover, natural health practices often emphasize preventive care, which, when used appropriately, may reduce long-term health care costs by minimizing chronic disease complications. Some critics claim that natural treatments often take longer to show results and may not be suitable for acute conditions. This is true to an extent. Herbal supplements and lifestyle interventions may not offer immediate relief like pharmaceuticals, but they can play a significant role in managing chronic illnesses, enhancing quality of life, and preventing disease progression. Lastly, there are valid concerns about information accessibility, drug interactions, and research funding. Many people still struggle to access reliable data on natural health treatments, especially online. And yes, there's a lack of funding for large-scale studies in this field, which limits the growth of high-quality evidence. But these are precisely the areas where improvement is both needed and, as Dink shows, already underway. In the end, the criticisms directed at natural health sciences aren't to be dismissed. They offer a chance to evolve, improve, and build a more credible foundation for the future. By addressing these critiques transparently and investing in research, regulation, and professional training, 
Natural Health can move from the margins into the heart of integrative, patient-centered care. For more insights, explore Chapter 5, Criticisms and Responses to Natural Health Sciences of Natural Health Sciences, a comprehensive guide by Rasset Dink. Thank you for watching. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel for more content on the intersection of technology and healthcare. Together, let's shape the future of healthcare.